Welcome to Victory Christian Center. You're about to hear from our senior pastor, Pastor Stefan Schlugel, as he brings a message on a Sunday service. The title of this current series of messages is Better Relationships. Better Relationships. Uh, you know, a relationship can be good, uh, but it can be better. And that's what we're aiming for. If a relationship is not good, it can be good. Uh, and, uh, and if it's already fantastic, it can be more fantastic. All right. So this morning, uh, I also have a subtitle. Uh, it's called five, five Practical Relationship Principles from God's Book of Wisdom or Books of Wisdom. Uh, and we'll expound on that uh, in just a little bit. Uh, but as we've already mentioned last week and earlier on, Pastor Vanessa, in the announcement uh, that we are currently uh, uh, journeying through a, uh, a series of messages, uh, and there's more coming, uh, that are totally focusing on relationships and how we can improve our lives and our interactions with those around us. Family, friends, workmates, uh, people that we interact with, uh, people in, the, in, our, in our local church, people from other, just all around, better relationships. That's what this is all about. And uh, I started out last week um, by making two quick statements that I want to repeat again, just by way of review, and then we'll cover some new ground from there. But we said that the message of the entire Bible is primarily about relationships. All right. Um, and, uh, you know, God created human beings because he wanted to have a relationship with us. Um, and we also discovered that we see that uh, uh, when uh, man's relationship with God was broken through sin, God sent Jesus Christ into the world to ultimately die on the cross, pay the price for our sins so that we could be reconciled back to God. And we've also said that God has uh, put his love in our hearts by the Holy Spirit so that we can love God and we can love each other. That we want to have a strong relationship vertically, strong relationship uh, relationships horizontally. And then the second point was that ultimately happiness and fulfillment in life doesn't come from having lots of stuff, even though it helps to have stuff. And it doesn't come from accolades for our achievements, even though it's good to have accolades for achievements. Happiness and fulfillment comes mainly from having good, strong, and lasting relationships. And with that, I want to turn to uh, the book of Ecclesiastes this morning, um, and then on into the book of Proverbs, uh, and read some portions of Scripture there um, in, in, the, in the Bible, what uh, Bible scholars call the wisdom literature. All right. Now, the Bible has got uh, all of the Bible is, wis is God's wisdom, uh, but we've got history in there. We've got the prophets. We've got poetry in there. We've got the gospels in there. We've got the letters to the churches. We've got the book of Revelation that speaks about future. So in the Bible, we've got past, present, and future. It's all there. But there is a few books in the Bible uh, that scholars call the wisdom literature because it is packed with God's practical wisdom for daily living. And two of those books are Book of Ecclesiastes, Book of Proverbs. Um, and depending on who you're reading after, some say that there are seven wisdom books, and others say there's three. Um, you know, that some of them say that uh, the Book of Job is included in that, and others say the Book of, uh, um, 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 of Psalms is in there. I would consider Psalms more in the poetry side of things, but look, it doesn't matter. All right, I'm just laying a foundation for where we're going because we're spending uh, practically all of our time in the book of Ecclesiastes and in the book of Proverbs today. All right. And uh, the Bible speaks uh, in the book of Proverbs and in Ecclesi Ecclesiastes. It speaks about God's wisdom to develop and to keep good relationships. Have you know that good relationships are not automatic? We have to develop them. Uh, we have to initiate relationships uh, uh, develop them, and then maintain them. It's like we said before, you know, it's like you buy a car, uh, and then you've got to maintain the thing, otherwise it'll break down somewhere, and relationships are just like that. All right. Now, talking about the book of Proverbs, let me just give you a, uh, a, a point of encouragement here. You know, there's 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs, 31, and uh, many months uh, out of the year have got 31 days. All right. To be exact, there's seven months out of the year that have got 31 days in it. Um, then there's four months that got 30 days in it. Uh, for those of you that know your calendar, and there's even a month that's got 28 or 27 days, depending on if it's a leap year. So uh, here's the point. Uh, 
Um, if we allocate one chapter in the book of Proverbs for each day of the month and read, meditate in it, and apply it, it'll dramatically improve our lives. All right. In fact, I have a thought, and I cannot give you chapter and verse for this. This is just an opinion of mine. But I reckon if Christians were to get into Proverbs and stay in Proverbs to this effect, uh, I reckon 80% of their problems would be solved and fixed up because the book of Proverbs has the wisdom for daily living. And the good thing about the book of Proverbs is it requires no interpretation. You know, there are certain portions in the scripture that we read, it re we need to interpret what, what it means. But Proverbs is like, <laughs> it doesn't need interpretation. It's just all right there. One-liners. Do this, don't do that. Do more of this, do less of that. And all the way through, it's absolutely fantastic. So let me say it again, that reading, meditating in, and applying the truths uh, of one chapter of Proverbs per day uh, would improve our lives dramatically. Now, if you haven't got a Bible reading plan going on right now, why don't you jump into that? All right. Uh, I'm back into my, reading my Bible through in a year. Um, and uh, so I'm following that plan. And I just recently read through the whole of the book of Proverbs. And uh, I'm just, each time I read through Proverbs, like, I'm just, wow, this is amazing. You know, this is just fantastic. This is just awesome. Anyway, here we go. We're reading from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 9 through to verse 12. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion, but woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm, but how can one keep warm alone? Uh, though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Ecclesiastes, um, God's wisdom Seeing we're speaking about relationships, I thought this would be a good place to start. You know, <laughs> Ecclesiastes encourages us and promotes us to develop relationships with other people. Um, you know, we have a relationship with ourselves. You know, some people like themselves and some people don't like themselves and that needs fixing up. You know, but then we need to look beyond ourselves and develop relationships with other people around us. It says two are better than one. Now, sometimes when we run through our relationship month, people say, well, look, they said, you're speaking about marriage and I'm not married. And what about us? And so we had a message there a while ago and we called it the power of one. All right. And praise God for the power of one. It's fantastic. You know, there is, there is, uh, there is life in, in singleness. For some people, it suits them. It's fine. And, uh, and for some, in some instances, it's not by choice. In other instances, it is by choice. But praise God for the power of one. All right. Uh, but here it says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. It's been said that two people individually can achieve amazing things but two people together can achieve more things, all right? They have a better reward for their labor when they combine forces together. That is not only so for husband and wife, but for people that join up and two friends join up and they do a project together. I like working together with other people when we do a project, we fix them, something or we build something or we sort something out. You know, I like discussing the job. I says, how are we going to fix this thing? And, and what do we need? What are the materials? And what are the tools? And then, you know, then we work this thing out together. And sometimes I like thinking out aloud. And, uh, and then I, I like the, the, you know, the, the sounding board, so to speak. I say, oh, that's a good idea, but maybe we do this better. And, and so it's good to work together. On, on projects, and it's good to work together in life all together. Uh, we're handling challenges better when we got other people around us, all right? It says in verse 10, if they fall, one will lift up his companion, all right? That's one of the reasons why two are better than one, because uh, the, the one that, that falls can be lifted up by the one that's still standing, and it says, woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. 
All right. So the moral of the story is, friend, do not be alone. Whether you're married or not married, do not be alone. The Bible speaks against being alone. Uh, God says in Genesis, it is not good for man to be alone. God has not created us to be uh, lone rangers uh, in life. Uh, we are... No, we're not. Uh, <laughs> I was just going to use a word. and No, that's not a good word. Uh, you know, they say in the, in the animal kingdom, they got herd animals and then they got loner animals. But uh, we are herd people. We are made for the herd. Uh, we are not made for just, you know, going up a mountain and staying up there by ourselves and living life by ourselves. God has put us together. All right. Uh, and uh, it says, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one uh, keep warm alone? Uh, and then it, it, it goes on to say in verse 12, one may be overpowered by another, but two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Um, and, uh, you know, they talk about uh, a rope or a braided cord. Uh, and many cords do indeed have actually three braids, uh, and they weave that thing together. Uh, and those three braids are stronger if you were to work out the, the, the strength of each individual strength uh, and count them up together. The three together are stronger than the three individually. So that's why it says if somebody gets attacked, uh, uh, and, and, and if, if two are together, they can, they can you know, push back. Uh, but he says a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So, my friend, you're a strand in that rope. And where are the other two in your life? And who are they? All right. We got multiple layers of relationships around us. You know, Jesus was a single man, I might uh, comment on. But he had friends around him. And when he was surrounded with his disciples, he had Peter, James, and John that were what we call his inner circle. And then he had the other nine around them, and then he had another 70 outside of those. And we can't have really close relationships with everybody in our lives, but with some people we do. You find that even in a small group environment when you got 6, 8, 10, 12 people in a small group, you don't have a really tight, close relationship, uh, uh, intimate relationship with everybody, but you do with two or three or maybe with at least one. All right? It's good to have that. Um, awesome. All right? Two are better than one. That's what the Bible speaks to us about. And, you know, uh, mentioned it before, but in Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, God says it is not good for man to be alone. Now, God does not require each of us to be married, but he strongly counsels us to be in relationship with each other, to go outside of ourselves and look beyond ourselves um, um, and uh, to not live a Lone Ranger style lifestyle or to separate ourselves. It's not good to do that. All right, so... Uh, Point number two in your outline uh, flowing on from there, it's making and maintaining relationships requires effort on our part. All right? I'm just stating the obvious. Uh, many things don't happen automatically in life. We need to put dedicated effort uh, towards that. Uh, I'm reading from Proverbs now. We're in Proverbs now, and we're going to stay in Proverbs until we finish. Uh, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 1, it says, A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment. All right? A man, and it's not necessarily speaking about a male. It's speaking about a human being, male or female, man or woman, whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire, he rages against all wise judgment. Sometimes people prefer to be mostly alone, uh, most, most of the time or all of the time, but that's not God's plan for our lives. God wants us in relationships, all right? Um, and sometimes people end up isolated from others through no fault of their own. All right, and sometimes say people say they move from one city to another city, from one country to another country by themselves, and suddenly you are isolated. I've changed around a little bit uh, in my early years, and suddenly you arrive somewhere and you know nobody. You got no friends there, and uh, back then, you know, I, I was never that good in keeping in touch with my uh, family. 
back then, you know, phone calls were expensive uh, and complicated. Um, it's not like today you pick up the phone and you go to every app under the sun and you can speak for free with people anywhere in the world. Well, it wasn't like that back then. And I, letter writing was never one of my gifts. Uh, just never, I just didn't enjoy it. And I start writing and then, oh, that doesn't look right. And then I put it away. I start again. I think, oh, forget it. I just forget it. So at one stage, uh, um, when I had left the country, uh, uh, where I grew up and in Europe and went to another European country and uh, my family wondered what had happened to me because they didn't hear from me for months. Now, I was having a ball. I was having fun. I never thought about, you know, keeping in touch with them. It's just the right thing to do. So this is bad practice. Um, and I'm just confessing my sins to you this morning. Uh, all right. And particularly mum wants to hear from you. Mum wants to know that you're okay. I mean, dad wants to know as well, but mums, you know, mums just always think about their, 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 their babies, you know, uh, even when they're adults already, mums still think about their babies. Uh, and so keep in touch with mum. Um, so a man who isolates himself, I got off the track there somewhere. <laughs> Sometimes people end up isolated from others through no fault of their own. Um, but God counsels us strongly against isolating ourselves from others. You see, it's one thing to, to get separated, but it's another thing to separate ourselves. You know, sometimes people have had bad experiences in relationships and they put up walls. You know, the walls are on the inside. You can't see them, but you get around people like that and you can feel the walls that they, 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 they have trust issues, they don't like opening up, they can't share, uh, you know, deeply and, and, and easily and be, for fear of being hurt again. Um, but you see, friends, we, the believers, we have not been given a spirit of fear. We have been given a spirit of power and of love and of a sound and a disciplined mind, and we do not let fear dominate our lives. If you've been hurt in relationship, and you've become fearful, cast down that fear and have another goal. You know, with relationships, as I say, you get the biggest joys out of relationships if they're good, but man, you can get the biggest disappointments out of it. You know, being let down, being rejected, all of this other stuff, but have another goal. All right, have another goal. Seeking and maintaining friendships with others is part of daily living. You know, some people, they just got friends everywhere. And, and it's wonderful. Some people are, are real social creatures. Uh, and, and yes, others prefer just to have a few friends, and that's okay. Uh, that's fine. Uh, but as I say, when we, you know, for ourselves that are, that are in God's kingdom, we're in the local church, the place where we make relationships is really the place where, you know, we join into a small group, and there's a handful of people there, and we learn to build relationships there. Uh, we learn to, to allow these people to, to see us for who we are and we don't hide we tear down the walls and we journey through life together um, Proverbs 18 verse 24 it says a man who has friends must himself be friendly and there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother so the implication here out of the scripture when it says a man who has friends must himself be friendly, the implication here is that friendly people have no difficulty in finding friends. All right? Just being friendly. We are attracted to friendly people. We are attracted to people who smile uh, and who are friendly uh, and so forth. And conversely, unfriendly people have difficulty making friends. And it is that simple and it is that basic. I'm, no, I'm, it's just speaking common sense, but that's what Proverbs is. It just gives us common sense and reminds us of some very, very basic things. Uh, and in the box, and it's in your outline, the practice of friendliness and kindness forms the basis of good relationships. So if we want better relationships. We need to do better in being more friendly and being kinder, all right, being kind with people. You know, when I go shopping, um, and I get to the checkout. Uh, I like to do self-checkout um, and, uh, because I'm in and I want to be out and I want to be gone. But uh, in fact, I do shop and go and then so I don't have to meet anybody. And I go in and I go out and I pay and I'm done. You know? But every now and then there is a rescan. How do you know what a rescan looks like? How do you do that? How do you do shop and go? All right, some of us. Uh, all right, well, 
Well, it's okay. I just like gadgets, you know. So, uh, so I have this gadget. I do shop and go, and there's oh, sorry, sir, rescan today. So we rescan everything, and then I'm a moment of oh, I hope I didn't forget it, uh, anything, and that'll be embarrassing. And I'm just really pleased that f- that for years now it's, it's spot on every time. And a couple of times I scanned something twice when I should have scanned it once. So I've a, I've got a really good name with the supermarket. Like they really like me. All right. <laughs> they like honest people. All right. So anyway, the point that I'm trying to make is this. When there's rescan and then, uh, you know, the, the, the person behind the counter, more often than not, a lady than a man, but, you know, sometimes there's a bloke there. It doesn't matter. I try to engage with these people. And, uh, and you know, they try to be really friendly. Uh, and then I try to be friendly back. And, uh, and then I, I take note of their name because they've got name badges on there. And then I say, you know, thank you, uh, Mary, for, for helping me today or something like that, I mention their name because I want to engage with them, all right? And, uh, and, then, uh, and then when I do that, you know, when, when, he, when you're a man and you get to my age and you've got a young lady there and you engage with her at this level, you get away with it, all right, when you're my age and people don't think that you've got ulterior motives or anything, but I, I just want, I want to help for them to have a good day. I, I want to be friendly. I know you're, you're like that too. And sometimes we get busy and sometimes I'm in and out and I'm just, uh, in fact, nowadays I've got this thing going on where I can pipe the, uh, you know, uh, a message that I'm playing on, on my phone. It could be YouTube, could be otherwise. I'll pipe it straight into my ears. I've got really clever ears, I tell you. Um, you know, I've got them electronic things uh, sitting on my ears and then I can go in there, I can do shopping and I'm in my own world, you know, <laughs> and, and I'm redeeming the time because when I'm busy, I like to do two things at the same time. Uh, some of you do that as well. In fact, some of you do it better than what I do. But anyway, I can go in and out without connecting with anybody, and sometimes I do that. But then while I'm there, even if I'm walking some, past somebody, I like to smile. I like to give them a smile of, of, of because a smile doesn't cost anything, and, and a thank you doesn't cost anything. And I think we could all improve our whole environment. We could, we could improve our community, our city, our whole nation by being just a little more friendly. All right. How you know that that would be the case? Uh, uh, so again, the practice of friendliness and kindness forms the basis of good relationships. This is true, uh, most certainly in husband and in wife relationships. It's true in family relationships. It's true with neighborly relationships. I like to keep really good neighborly relationships. Um, um, I make a real effort. Uh, I want to be friendly. I, I just, uh, I, 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 I would not like the idea of living next to a neighbor that I don't like them and they don't like me. I just don't like that idea. I like to have good relationships. Um, and I think it's good for, for, for us to make efforts. Uh, though with some people, it's a bit harder than with others, I should say. For some people, it's just a bit harder. But nonetheless, you know, good relationships all around. Friendliness and kindness uh, is very much at the basis. Uh, it's just walking through life uh, uh, with a smile and with friendliness and pleases and thank yous. It goes a long, long way. All right. Some of you are now less excited than what you were before. So I'm going to move on to the third point uh, and speak to you about relationships that are separated by unkind and unfriendly words. As I said, this is as basic as what it gets, all right? <laughs> Proverbs 17, verse 9, it says, He who covers and forgives an offense seeks love, but he who repeats or harps on uh, a matter separates even close friends. So friendships can be built by kindness and friendly words, and friendships can be separated by people that, that are gossips, that, that repeat matters that should not be repeated by what the Bible calls tale bearers. Uh, uh, people that, that hear a tale over here, modify it a little bit, and retell it again over here. You know, there's one basic premise that we work to in our relationships, in our small group relationships. We don't make this as, as much a law. We just have it more like common sense to say, look, what's said in the group stays in the group. Uh, uh, that would be a good thing to do because if people open up their lives and they share uh, deep things, uh, it's good for that to stay there. But when somebody then, when somebody Somebody then hears that and, and takes that away and repeats that over here and maybe here and here and here in a slightly twisted version. How many of you know you've got a gossip on your hand? And when you've got a gossip on your hand, even the best of friends can be separated. Why? Because there is unfriendliness and there's unkindness going on and it tears up relationships. 
as I've seen that over the years, where sometimes you think you've got something going, then somebody says something, and somebody else heard something, and somebody else repeated something over here, and then suddenly people sort of think, you know, they sort of try to, you know, it's, it's, it's just uh, divisive words. You know, the Bible speaks in the book of Proverbs, uh, and it's not in the outline, but it's in chapter 6. It says there are six things that God hates, seven that are an abomination to him. And one of those things is somebody that sows discord amongst the brethren. Going around and, you know, dropping off gossip things here. And uh, uh, some gossip could be based on truth. Uh, most gossip is not. Uh, it's only one side uh, of a story and probably twisted and having a bit of a slant on it. Uh, this is what people do. And some people do that very well. Uh, and, and it's horrible. Uh, it's terrible. As I say, for some people, <laughs> you know, this is not just... Uh, this is not just uh, out of the church, this is sometimes in the church. Uh, Vanessa and I, we've met people over the years. We're like, you know, some people got a constant undercurrent going on in their lives. They just always got something going on, and they pick something up over here, repeat it over here, and certain things are just best left unsaid. You know, gossip repeats the matter over and over and ends up separating even the closest of friends, which is a real tragedy. Um, Proverbs 11, verse 13, a talebearer reveals secrets. But he who is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter. All right, so what the Bible says here is that, uh, that uh, somebody who covers an offense is one who seeks love. But somebody who spreads it around seeks strife and division. And there are people that got strife in their own hearts. And no matter where they go, strife follows them around. They've got a trail of broken relationships in their lives. And that strife, before relationships externally will be fixed, the strife needs to be taken out of their heart. All right? The bitterness out of their heart. Uh, uh, it, it is important. Um, so it says, A talebearer reveals secrets, but he who is of a faithful spirit conceals the matter. So, you know, most people have some indiscretion somewhere in their own life or in their own family. Bad decision was made. Something was done that shouldn't have been done. Um, you know, misjudgment. Something, something was said that shouldn't have been said. You know, most people got something going on in their lives. And gossips are always looking for those tasty morsels. <laughs> gossips. The Bible says that, that uh, a, a, a gossip, a, a gossip is like... When somebody hears it, it's like a tasty morsel that goes down into the innermost being. And I've heard gossip about somebody that I used to like, and when I see them again, I'm having trouble liking them because my life has been affected by some gossip that dumped on me, and now I have to deal with that. All right? Now I have to repent of that. Now I have to overcome those feelings that shouldn't be there because of some gossip. Um, and so I, I'm usually pretty good these days. Uh, when somebody starts stumping, uh, I just look, do, do, do I really need to know that? That's a good question to ask. So if you want to slow the gossip down, you ask the question, do I really need to know that? Um, and if that doesn't do it, you come on a bit strong and say, look, I don't want to know that. I've got to go. I'm, I'm busy. Because gossips are waiting for somebody that, that can pull into their web, into their conspiracy thing. They like, you know, they like to be affirmed. Uh, they like to be the, the, the breaker of the news about so-and-so and about so-and-so. And, -so. and it is, it's just terrible. But this is life. You see, talebearers, gossips, cannot wait to reveal other people's secrets. But people of a faithful spirit conceal other people's secrets. And, you know, certain things, we've said it before, certain things shouldn't be revealed or spoken about. Just be left, best left alone. Certain things we just, you know, it's like we take the high road. You see, in life, we, we can either scratch with the chickens or we can fly with the eagles. But you can't fly with the eagles and scratch with the chickens at the same time. And some people just like chickens that just scratch in the dirt, scratch, 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 until they find some tasty morsel um, and then uh, <laughs> share it with other people and, uh, and so forth. But there's some people that are just like, look, uh, 
no, no, I, I, I've got time for that. I'm, I'm busy right now. And this is where relationships get torn down again and again and again. You know, Proverbs cannot get any more clearer about this issue than what we are talking about right here. Proverbs 19.11, the discretion of a man makes him slow to anger, and his glory is to overlook a transgression. So in other words, people who conceal the matter see everything that everybody else is seeing, they just decide not to comment about it. They just decide to overlook it. All right. So, uh, so overlooking a transgression isn't a weakness, but it is the strength of the wise. All right. We see what everybody else sees, but we just choose to overlook it. And we don't say anything. Now, uh, in brackets then, it's in your outline. Uh, there's obviously checks and balances that need to go on here. We don't overlook criminal activity. We don't overlook family violence. We don't overlook abuse uh, that's going on. We don't overlook uh, those things. Uh, but even there, we need to ask ourselves, is this my business to deal with? Or do I let somebody else deal with that? Or do I inform somebody else of that? So as I said, there is uh, multiple uh, um, you know, possibilities there. So I'm not suggesting that, you know, we, we, <laughs> we live next to a neighbor where, you know, the, the, the wife is beating up the husband night after night, and that does happen. That does happen. Uh, and we don't say anything. How do you know that that's not what, something that we overlook? Somebody needs to do something here. But other things, you know, people's indiscretion, things that, you know, line their lives somewhere best left alone, um, because we are people of a faithful spirit. We're here to build relationship. We seek love. We do not try to tear up relationships. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 28, it says, A troublemaker plants seeds of strife, and gossip separates the best of friends. It says, I was just amazed reading through Proverbs. It's everywhere. All right. Uh, Proverbs speaks about wise people, speaks about fools, um, speaks about... Uh, Wisdom about foolishness, it speaks about things to say, things not to say, th people to join with and people not to join with, um, and it tells us to not even correct the fool because, uh, you know, as I said, Proverbs is just filled with wisdom, um, and uh, I'm endeavoring to live my life according to Proverbs because I've discovered over the years uh, uh, that uh, when I do, my life's better, <laughs> okay? And when I break one of them rules that the uh, book of Proverbs speaks about, then I usually pay for it. So, uh, and, and, and it's good to learn. Uh, it's, it's, it's best to learn from the Word, but sometimes we learn from our experiences. At least, you know, we need to learn somewhere. So a troublemaker plants seeds of strife. You see, strife and infighting in relationships usually doesn't start out of nowhere. It's like, oh, where did that come from? No, 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 no. There was, there was typically somebody that planted seeds of strife by usually speaking certain words. And those seeds, and, and when the Bible says seeds, it means seeds. They're not literal seeds. They are seeds. Words are seeds. And sometimes those words sit there, and sometimes it takes days, weeks, or months, but those words will eventually end up producing, and what they produce is strife. Um, and uh, so it's good for us to recognize uh, that, uh, you know, that we need to be careful not to um, sow seeds of words of strife ourselves and not let other people do that into our lives. Uh, when they come with some sort of wild story and says, look, I'd rather not know. Is this really our business to discuss? Um, because here in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 15, it says, let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. All right? And there are those who are just busying themselves. They're always on about other people's lives. They don't care of their own lives. Their own lives are in a mess, so they try to mess up everybody else's life. You know, busybodies. Uh, and uh, the Bible tells us not to do that. Uh, now, very quickly, point number four. Relationships are compromised by unrestrained talking. 
Uh, and as I said before, it doesn't get any more basic than this. It is really common sense, but it's good to note some of these things, seeing we are in our relationship month, and maybe do a little checkup uh, ourselves and, and, and what we allow ourselves to say or what we allow ourselves to listen to. Good and frequent relation, uh, conversations, rather, are necessary to maintain good relationships. You know, we talk, we converse with people. Um, and, um, but however, too much talking becomes counterproductive. <laughs> so what does that mean? When somebody talks all the time, it's too much of a good thing. All right. Here in Proverbs uh, chapter 10, verse 19 where there are many words, transgression is unavoidable. But he who restrains his lips is wise. The tongue of the righteous is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is worth little. In the King James Version, it says, in the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. It's good to have conversation, to talk with people and to, you know, to share and so forth. Good to do that, good to do that. But at a certain point, it can get too much. And people that incessantly talk, they will inevitably, inevitably stray into sin somewhere with the words that they speak. Because after a while, when you've talked about the weather and how was your week? And, you know, when you talked about what you needed to talk about and you've been shopping today, what did you buy? You know, after what you talked about all of that. And, and it's good, you know, Vanessa and I, we sit down, we have a cup of tea together. We still do couch time together. We talk about things. But, you know, at a certain stage, everything that needed to be said is now said. And, uh, and uh, actually, I, I'm not only a believer in having conversation, I also believe in nonverbal uh, communication. All right, nonverbal. As I say, you get amongst people that are of that kind, you don't need to say a whole lot, and yet they know exactly what you mean. All right? And because people, that's just somehow a way to, uh, it's our demeanor, our body language, a smile, and, and so forth. And, uh, and, and, but, but nonetheless, it's necessary to communicate. Uh, Ed Cole, uh, the father of men's ministry, used to tell us that communication is the basis of life. So you've got to have communication to have a basis for live, living together with people or having people in our lives. But what Proverbs is telling us here is when we go beyond a certain quota. Now I've used the word quota. Oh my. <laughs> when we, we go beyond a certain quota, we're straying into sin. So what am I and, and, uh, trying to do? I'm simply telling us that the Bible tells us don't talk all the time. It's good to listen every now and then. You know, it's, somebody said that God's given us one mouth and two ears. Um, Book of James, which is also good, sharp wisdom. Book of James says, be quick to hear and slow to speak. Okay. And, and it's good to let other people finish their sentences and uh, finish their story. Um, and uh, what's interesting here is that it says, He who restrains his lips is wise. The tongue of the righteous is as choice silver. And I thought about that a little bit. I think silver, silver, silver. Silver is a precious metal. Now, why is it precious? Not because it's shiny. It's precious because it's rare. You know, iron is plentiful. Iron is cheap. So anybody, if you have got any scrap metal at home, and if you've got copper, you've got you got, uh, you know, some even stainless steel or aluminium uh, and so forth. You go to a scrap metal dealer, and I do occasionally, <laughs> because we strip things out from around here, and then we get some money for it and so forth. If you take steel up there, you might get, uh, uh, you, might get you know, they might give you uh, just a bit over $100 a ton. It's like you need a truckload to, get, to make it worth your while. But you take copper up there. Because it's more precious, uh, you get more money, or you take stainless steel and such like. And so, what the Bible tells us here is that uh, the, the 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 tongue of the of the righteous people is like choice silver. They don't talk all the time, but when they talk, it's worth listening. All right. So, uh, how many of you are excited about my message this morning? Because some of you are almost like, oh no, a pastor, you're talking to us about the wrong thing. But friend, let me tell you, Proverbs. Is for all of us. And this is just a compilation of some scriptures that will really, really help us um, 
in our relationships. And are we still going to be friends afterwards? Everybody all right this morning? Okay, very good. Okay, so we're wrapping up very shortly. Uh, Proverbs 17, verse 27. He who has knowledge spares his words, and a man of understanding is of a calm spirit. So again, the Bible speaks there about wisdom. It speaks there about knowledge, about understanding, and it's good to be uh, to spare words. Uh, but though it's some people are so quiet, like you almost wonder what's going on in their lives. They need to do more talking. And then some people talk all the time, and they need to do less talking. Have you know that God just likes us to go come into the middle of the road? We shouldn't be in, on one side of the road in the ditch or on the other side of the road in the ditch. God wants us to be in the center. God wants us to come into sort of some normality. Now, some people will always talk more than others, and some people will be more quiet, but, uh, but it's just good to, for us to, you know, to deal with the excesses in our lives um, and... Uh, and, uh, yeah, praise God for that. And a man of understanding is of a calm spirit. <laughs> I'm going to read a series of uh, uh, scriptures now without commenting much, and then we're going to wrap up. But it's good for us to avoid strife in relationships. Um, so there is some conflict in every relationship virtually, and that's not uncommon, and that's not necessarily unhealthy. Certain things, you know, sometimes you, you, you find that one's got one thought, another one's got another thought, different opinions, and sort of you got to sometimes massage things to bring it together uh, so that you're able to move forward, whether that's in a marriage or whether that's two blokes getting together and doing a job. And, you know, the, the, there's one way and there's another way, but in the end they need to agree on the way that things are going to be done. Otherwise, they can't work together. So a little bit of conflict is quite okay. So long as we handle it maturely, but strife can and should be avoided. Strife's not a good thing. Proverbs tells us, let me start again, James tells us, it says, uh, uh, is it James chapter 2, chapter 3? It says, where there's strife and envy, there's confusion and every evil work. Where there's strife and envy. Strife and envy go together. If somebody's in strife, they usually got envy going on as well. And if people allow their homes to be places of constant strife, there will be constant confusion and there will be every evil work. So what does that look like? Well, you see, um, the devil can't just barge into our lives any way he wants to. Uh, there are certain boundaries on him, and we got, uh, you know, the protection of God over our life. We live by the word. We confess the word. We put up the shield of faith. But when I engage in strife, it's like opening up the door and say, Mr. Devil, help yourself. You can come in any time. And some people's homes are like that. Uh, there's constant strife going on. And because of constant strife, there's constant confusion, and there's constant uh, evil work going on. There's sickness, there's more disease, there's stuff going on that shouldn't be going on. And if, I'm not blaming every sickness and every disease on strife, but here, that's the deal. You see, friends, when we allow ourselves to head down the track and we get into strife with somebody, it's not good to do that. Let me read those few scriptures there, and then we're going to wrap up. Proverbs 10, verse 12, it says, Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sins. What does that mean? Well, just as it tells us here, when there's strife going on, somebody's got hatred in their heart. Hatred, of course, is a sin. It's mentioned as one of the works of the flesh. We need to repent of that. Uh, and if we get hatred out, we can get the strife out too. Proverbs 13, verse 10, By pride comes nothing but strife, but with the well-advised is wisdom. What does that mean? If there's strife there, somebody's got hatred in their heart, somebody's got pride in their heart. For strife to be perpetuated, you've got to have those two things going on. Uh, and, and because that's really, you know, the, the hatred and the pride is, is, is the root and strife is the fruit. So to deal with the strife, you've got to deal with the root of hatred and of jealousy and of envy uh, and of those things. Um, next scripture there, Proverbs 11 verse 29. Those who bring trouble on their families will have nothing in the end. Foolish people will always be servants to the wise. Let's deal with the first part of that verse here, of that sentence here. What does it mean to bring trouble to our families? Friends, here is the deal. Our homes are sanctuaries. All right? Um, you know, when we go out and we walk around with our gumboots, if we got some out in the muddy field, when we go home, 
we take the gum boots off. We don't trample through the house because it's a sanctuary. We want to keep this place clean. We want to keep it, you know, protected and everything. We want to look after things. And so we have to do with our relationships as well. We don't bring in certain stuff. We just protect our turf, protect our home because it is a sanctuary. You know, when you go out into the real world on a Monday into the battlefield called the marketplace and you work in the job, you work in the business, you, you, you do what you do, and, you know, out there it's cutthroat. And sometimes we get a bit wary with everything that we see going on out there and, and what goes on. But when we come home, it's like, whew, we can relax now, you know, put up our feet and, and relax. But you can only relax in a peaceful space. And so we create an atmosphere of peace and get the strife out so we can relax at home. And when we relax, we can go out into the battlefield again the following day. Proverbs 12, 18, there's one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. You know, some people, when they speak, it's like a sword fight. You know, they will stab you with words like, just like somebody would with a sword in their hand if they're against you. And yet the Bible says that, uh, you know, sweet words are like a honeycomb. Uh, so, so we need to choose our words carefully. We need to choose the tone of our voice uh, carefully. We even need to pick our time because certain times is not the time to talk about certain things. We need to pick our times. Have you have, have already discovered that? Some, it's just, you know, when, it's when we're ready for that, we'll have that discussion. Uh, and, uh, and sometimes it's a, look, let's just leave that discussion here before it heads down the track and escalates and ends up. Let's just leave that right now. Let's come back to it later. Um, it says, a soft answer turns away wrath, uh, Proverbs 15.1. Um, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Um, In Proverbs 20, verse 3, second to last scripture, it is honorable for a man to stop striving since any fool can start a quarrel. It takes no intelligence to start a quarrel. Any fool can do that, but it takes an honorable person to put a stop to this thing and say, look, let's leave it here and let's move on. Proverbs 26, verse 20, where there is no wood, the fire goes out, and where there is no tailbearer, strife ceases. 